Hey, so before beginning, select that front view and set that alpha gain to something about 0 0.5, 0 0.4, somewhere in there. And on the, the side view, I don't need that. I really just want to have it here. Um, and Oh, and the back view. Back view. Set that about 0.5. Also, come over here to your layer display layers and set all the guides, all all of the uh, image references to reference layers. So we begin this process with a box. Get a polygon cube, bring it into the scene. Switch to vertex and scale them up. And let's scale them in world space. Go ahead and just translate those up here. So. These first two are going to go to the nose, and these two are going to go to the tail. And these can be just a little bit smaller for the nose, and this one can be just a little bit smaller for the tail. Now, what you want to do is divide it right down the center. So turn on your multi-cut tool, hold control and middle click, and cut right down the center. Now what you want to do is take that one edge right there at the front, the one on the tip of the nose, select it, come over to your modeling toolkit, and turn symmetry on. Choose world X. Now when we tag vertices, notice that we're tagging on both sides of the mesh. And when we tag when we tag edges, we're tagging on both sides of the mesh. So go ahead, tag vertices, and translate those. And translate those to be about as wide as the shoulders. Next, insert two edges for the shoulder. Hold control and click. Not a middle click, just click. Hold control, click. Two for the hip. Hold control, click. And click. Don't add anything else and tag vertices and translate to the what would be the front end of the shoulder and then this one to the back end of the neck. Go ahead and turn on wireframe so that we can see this. Tap spacebar to focus on one view and just get close to the silhouette. And the hip's pretty easy to see here. And then these two are tail so they can come way out here. And these two are the nose, so that can go up there, like that. So that's what you have so far. We can't do very much with the hips and shoulders because we need at least one edge running down the full length of the body in order to shape the shoulders. So for what we have right now, it's done. Let's take the vertices at the tip of the nose and let's move them, translate them to center. and it's about the width of the nose. Next, let's add an edge loop for the back of the head and translate that edge loop. Back of the head. And where does this one go? So this one's going to be behind the jaw. Back of the skull, back of the jaw, below. Next, let's add one that will ultimately be called the face loop, what I call the face loop. That one's going to be just above the brow and ultimately this one will go behind the jaw, uh, behind behind the mouth, around the jaw. But again, we don't have enough to articulate that, so we're going to leave it. And then, just for the sake of clarity, we'll add one more on the snout, which will separate between eye and nose. Don't wor And don't worry about articulating anything else in the head for now. This is what you have in a 3D view. It's not very impressive. Looks like a baby seal without fins. Next, let's add at least three on the torso. So here I will do control middle click. So that's one in the middle, two, Three. Translate those vertices.
Now let's add one right down the center. Control middle click. Now here's an interesting thing. I did that without edge flow turned on. Let's do that with edge flow turned on. Control middle click. And now we've got a little bit of plumpness to it. Take a couple minutes and move vertices to match references on front view. Switch to the back view for additional help. Now let's turn on tweak mode. So hold down W, left click and hold and choose tweak mode. This allows you to move vertices around freely. You don't have to select them and then move them. You can move them around freely. Again, there's not much that we can do at this point. Notice that I can't deselect this point. when I'm, I have to get very far away to deselect that point. And then if I get too close to that point, I accidentally select it with tweak mode on. Let's fix that setting. We can find that under settings, preferences, preferences. Under the selection category, change tweak dead space to 10. And then hit save. Now when I want to select this vertex, I have to be within about 10 pixels in view space before I can actually select it. That's much better. That's the kind of sensitivity I'm looking for. So that way I can just marquee real quick, move vertices. And I don't have to be really far away to deselect. So it's important to identify the regions that you're working with here. So we know that this section is the head. We know that this section, this section here is the neck. I know that this one is the shoulder. I know that this one is the hip. And I know that this section is torso, and then finally this section is the tail. What's really important is identifying, sho identifying shoulders and hips, these two sections right here. And, and the reason is because what we do, our next few decisions change how well it paints and how well it animates. Select the two polygons facing you. Switch to perspective view if you have a hard time seeing that from the side just those two polygons that are facing you for the shoulder. Also, select the two polygons facing you that make the, the hip. Again, switch to perspective view to make sure you have the right polygons, correct polygons. Now extrude them, control E, and give a slight offset to them, just so that you can see where they are. Go ahead and switch to the perspective view. Uh, give a slight amount of thickness to them, just push them out a little bit. All right, now do it again, control E. Very important decision to do it twice right here. Okay, now why is that such an important decision? It's an important decision because of, because of this corner right here. So notice that this corner has five edges. If I had not done a double extrusion outward for shoulders and hips, ultimately that polygon right there and that one right there will become the legs and the foot, the paw. If that were extruded down, neighboring the extrusion I did sideways, this corner would have had six edges. Classic mistake. So doing a double extrusion here puts effectively this four-point polygon loop between what is functionally going to become the shoulder and leg and the, the chest and the belly. To make the extrusion downward for the legs, where we want to take that and that polygon and move them downward to make them more usable, we need to split the shoulders and the hips right down the middle, just like that. And the, uh, what is that called, the uh, edge flow. Um, just tweaked it a little bit, but that's fine. We can get in there and counter tweak. Okay, so 
So ultimately, to make the leg interesting, and we'll see eventually, we're going to divide, we're going to split here one more time eventually. But let's take what we have right now, keep it simple, keep it simple in the beginning, and extrude these to downward for the leg. So extrude, and then we'll switch to front view and simply translate those all the way down. Yeah, actually not all the way down. Not all the way down. Let's go, yes, yes, no, no, go all the way down. Go all the way to the end of the foot. Sorry, correction. I meant to say that. Go all the way down. And then go ahead, turn on wireframe and tag. So so my, my strategy here is one where I always go for the the ends of the limbs or the ends of the body. So for example, these vertices right now are not going to make any sense to you because I'm putting them in a place that just seems like garbage. But basically I want these to be the front end of the paw. So it looks really dumb right now. But watch this. So we insert an edge loop where the elbow would be. Okay, good. Let's insert an edge loop where the ankle would be. Okay. Let's work with that. Let's work with what we've got here. And let's not insert that with edge flow turned on. Let's make sure edge flow is turned off. So just, just, just for the moment, let's turn edge flow off just so that we can kind of try and stay steady here. Then manipulate these in place. And you'll see that the leg very quickly takes shape when you go straight for the end. And then the paw, turn edge flow back on, paw translate. See how the paw just, boom, it's there. It's just, it's just there. Instead of growing your way there, which so many modelers do, I see online, they kind of grow their way to that position. Don't do that. Just, just move these vertices that you've extruded the very, the very first time and just go straight for the end of the body. Just like we did at the beginning when we went from, we went from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. Yeah. I also failed to mention earlier, that where I drop these initial edge loops, it's basically where two bones come together. It's where the flexible joint is. So every every one of these early decisions, well, maybe not every one of them, but definitely for legs and toes um, and fingers and things for other characters, uh, these initial edge loops are always where the bones come together. So the interesting thing about this kind of symmetry modeling is that each time we multi-cut, on one part of the body, like say the leg here, you can see that it's not happening to the other side. I'm not sure why that that should be there. And to my knowledge, uh, it's not there. And I've looked around quite a bit over several different years. So in the meantime, I've come up with other solutions. And one of my previous students, he wrote a tool uh, where all you have to do is select the the midline going down the center, just select it. And then uh, he gave us that tool, and it comes with your uh, preferences download. It's right here. It's called RSIM, Rebuild Symmetry. And you can see just clicking that, it'll take the positive X side, positive X side, and mirror it to the other side and stitch everything back together for you. So we can continue going. So this way I can insert edge loops along the length of the body, like so, or down the leg, like so. And then I'd have to select that midline each time and hit repair symmetry or rebuild symmetry to get those edges on the other side. So for now, while we're in the process of adding edges on one half, we'll have to, uh, and, and assuming those edges don't, uh, aren't a cross section, like how this one's a cross section. So obviously those vertices will be added on both sides. But assuming we're on a leg, we'll have to use that rebuild symmetry. And I think I should map that to a keyboard shortcut just to make it fast, or at least isolate it over here on the shelf to make it easier to get. Let's at least do that. Let's go to the shelf editor and select our rebuild symmetry tool. There it is, our sim, and move it down so that it, it, at least it's easy to find. It's right here at the end of the list. 
So before continuing on, continuing on with the rear leg, select the two front polygons on the front side of the forepaw, grow your selection to include uh, most of the leg, something like that. Then hit shift I to hide everything else and just isolate this selection. Of course, it hid my references. So turn off the front view reference. T turn off the referencing on the front view reference. Or forget that. Leave that on. To make Force this selection in the outliner. Control click it in the outliner. And then hit shift I to at least so we can see what we're doing here. And now go ahead and manipulate vertices using tweak mode. I like to have that center edge, uh, that center poly loop facing me. So that poly loop, I like to have that one facing me. And then the vertices of the of the one running on the side, I like that one to be bubbled out a little bit. So that's the one that actually matches the contours right there. That one. We see that in shaded seed, that one. And that's the one that's running on the inside of the leg and the outside of the leg. So that's the one I want that I want to have match contours on front view. The underside of the arm or the, the leg can be a little tricky, so just get these outward out here a bit. Make sure you're following contours of the chest. Stick on the stick to the contours and try to find that vertex. There it is. And you don't get it perfect right away. Don't 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 do that. Just kind of get you know generalized. Just really generalized. So this eventually will become paw, right? Or toes. Toes on the paw, right? So these uh, th those right there will eventually become toes. So we want to, when looking at the reference, keep keep these fairly wide on the front end because eventually they'll be split to these four toes. And here's a trick for you. Go to the right hand view, and select that polygon that appears to be the bottom of the paw, right there at the end there, and come up here to absolute transform and set it to Y0. And that's why it's so important that our, our, our references are on the ground so that, so that when we do something easy like that, the paw is actually pressed on the ground. Another th another thing that I try to do, um, I try to do this as much as I can, is, is to keep edge loops or, or vertex loops as, um, as flat as possible. I try to uh, uh, keep them on the same plane. So I might, you know, I might do something like, like that to try and just to, just to level them out. And if if I can, if it makes sense, if it makes sense to do that, I will. Um, so you know, looking at that one from from this view, I might I might just lift those up just slightly, like that, just so that they're close to the same plane. Notice I don't have them stacked on top of each other because I want to see them. So I will have them slightly off from each other, so that I can see where they are. And then I'll continue to do this tweaking process. Um, I can't see my references, so Shift I. There we go. Deselect everything, shift I to get those references back. So if you want to isolate the polygons like we did earlier, um, select a couple of polygons, select the reference you want, and then shift I to isolate it. So this, this vertex right here, this edge loop, in fact, that's the one running down the center of the, of the leg. That's our contours on the front view. That, that edge right there is the contour on the uh, front view reference. Or it should be. It's not really, is it? There we go. It's supposed to be right there. And a lot of times I'll wiggle points. I'll just w give them a wiggle. 
um, just to see where they are. Are they in front? Are they in back? Where are they? And you can see from this particular view, from the front view, it's handy to hide the uh, isolate the foreleg with the with the reference so that I don't have that hind leg in the back. And that's also why I'm not really spending any time on the hind leg right now, because just just a stick, isn't it? Um, I'm not spending any time on that one because I don't want it to interfere with um, with what I'm seeing right now. So same deal here. I, I've got you know really wide polygons here on the shoulders. I really want to bring that stuff in. So I'm going to tag some points and then turn on B for boy, and then just click and drag to the left. Click and drag towards the left to shrink this brush. And just make a soft selection and just move that stuff in. Just move that stuff in. There. See? There we go. Big chunks. Big chunks. Generalize. Generalize. Work our ways to details later. Big chunks. Work on the neck. Work on the head. Let's look at the back view. So when we look at the back view, we're only going to manipulate the hip and the butt, the testes, and the other bits back here. So we're not we're not trying to manipulate anything on the chest or the forelegs. Just the stuff that's back here. Okay. Here, I just want to do a little bit of rounding out of the form, try to get away from the boxy shapes. Um, I'm not paying attention to reference in this moment. I just want to get away from the boxy shapes. And there's there's other ways that I can do this as well. Um, there are sculpting tools, smoothing tools, but it's such a low poly object that I think at this point, I would really like to just just focus on speed. Just Just focus on speed. I don't need to mix in any other tools, just just move points around, and I'll be done soon. So just getting a little bit of that boxiness out. So not sure if I said it earlier, but this process is box modeling. This is what's referred to as box modeling. Maybe you've heard of it online. Maybe you've maybe you've heard of your friends talking about it. Because it's so cool. Your friends talk about it. So we have very little to work with back here. Let's insert edge loops on the hind leg. All right, the hind leg on the right hand view. Multi cut. Uh, control click. Let's turn off that edge flow just for the moment. Oh, it is off. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I forgot I can control shift click. Control shift click while the multi cuts tool is turned on, and I can just switch edge flow right there. Control shift click. Okay, so I'm just going to control click on the mesh. And oh, actually, no, before I do that, um, Let's do what we did earlier, where we move these vertices to the toe, right? So this becomes the front of the toe. Just get that in, just get that in the area, basically vertical. Just stack them vertical with each other, right? Okay, good. And then when with edge flow turned off, uh, click and marquee and drag. Don't worry about those lines back there. That's the other leg that's not symmetrical yet. Okay, good. And then again, down here. And you have reference I've given you. Uh, you can see the bone structure, so you can see where, where these joints, where these edge loops for the joints need to go. Where exactly? They need to go. One more up here. Okay, and then the rest of it is keeping the shape of the leg. But those those should be the joints. Let me check my reference. So here's my leg bone reference. 
seems like seems like we got it. Maybe this one could be tweaked just a smidge lower. Yeah, and hips way up here, but we have to worry about that one. We'll deal with that one with rigging. Really, these these are planar joints. This hip joint's a little bit is a ball and socket joint. This is a planar joint, planar. So we want to be a little bit more precise with that placement. Maybe we could go like arc downward like that. Yeah, that might be better. Yeah, and this one will work for the for the heel because eventually we're going to split here a couple times and here a couple times. So this will this will work out well. All right. So now we want to uh, tweak vertices. Oh, and rebuild symmetry, and make this polygon flat on the bottom. All right. Let's rebuild symmetry. Chris made that easy for us. So easy. Look at that. Done. All right, and let's isolate the hind leg polygons. Grow, grow, grow. And the side view. No, back view. No, no, side view and back view. Uh, and then shift I. That's good. And switch to the switch to the side view. Same stuff as before, tweak vertices, matching contours. Also, same thing as before, that polygon on the bottom side of the foot here, the bottom side of the paw. Uh, which one is that? The That one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one's, the, that one's the bottom of the paw. Make sure it's flat on the ground. You can do that any time, I guess. So it's just flat on the ground. And then these vertices are probably just a wee bit wider. Back view. Yeah. Yeah. So just put those over here. Those can stay right about there. And then tag all of those and set them to Y0. So now there's your paw on the ground. Now, I don't really want to focus on the front view reference because we don't have reference for the hind leg on the front view. But we do know that this paw, toe, the toes of this paw are going to be uh, uh, extruded from more or less these two faces right here these three faces right here. So make sure that's wide enough to support that. And again, same strategies as before. In this case, I'm not going to level out this edge loop, but I would level it out in the right hand view. Try to keep it straight. It just makes it easier for the rigger when it comes time to put bones, some joints in this character and make it animatable. Feel free to add in one or two uh, supporting edge loops to support the contours. Just make sure you rebuild symmetry afterward, afterwards. Something else you can do is that when you rebuild symmetry, it that tool that Chris wrote, um, it automatically softens the edges. Notice all the black in my viewport. You know, at this low level, uh, low, low poly state, uh, go ahead, switch this to um, use harden edges like that so that way you can see the planes of the dog um, clearly plainly uh, let's work on the tail just a wee bit to help thin it out so let's go to the right hand view and I know we're not following any reference at this point I suppose I could have painted in the tail um, but it is what it is so we're going to split here and then let's split it um, one, two, three more times. No more than that, really. That should be enough. We just need enough to articulate the the transition from uh, hip, hip, anus to tail. And here at the end, I'm just pulling the corners back like that, and that will help round it out with subdivision surfaces. That'll look good. And then just check that out in perspective view towards the end or or in the back view you know go to the back view frame that up and just make sure that it's actually shaped in such a way that it'll be round when sub D's is turned on
And you know, this is a little bit hard on my eyes. So what I'm going to do is switch this to use a, a fog material, just some basic thing. And I'm going to make it blue. Blue is a little bit easier. And I'm going to switch the background to green. It kind of wakes me up too. So here's something. Um, so I have a uh, tweak turned on, right? So when I tag these, I, I want to scale them because so, I want to flatten them, do that little scale flattening trick. Um, but I can't see it. So you got to turn off the tweak mode so that you can see the individual axes and then just pull that to center. And that, that should basically flatten them out on the Z axis. Not the tail, not the tip of the tail though. And then continue the rounding it out process. Uh, you could go through the trouble of performing an extrusion of some rounded out some some rounded out polygons, but um, it really doesn't take that long to move these points. So here I'm just matching contours. I came across some points that are not on the contours, so I just want to stay on contour. And right now I'm focusing on the right hand side. But I won't stay here very long. Don't stay in one view too long. It's a bad habit. Don't do that. Got to get around. Got to switch the perspective. Usually the way I do it is I'll, I'll work with side, then front or back, then perspective, then back to side, front or back, and then back to perspective. So here I'll switch to perspective and take a look at it in the round. See how things are shaping up. And don't worry if it seems like it's not quite right or it's just, you know, looking like some kind of MMO, MMO video game from 1999. It's uh, the nature of the low poly modeling. Yeah, and I can model on either side as long as that symmetry is on. Here I'm just going to tuck in the belly a bit, give it a little bit of chest. Here I'm just going off with some stuff I know, giving it a little bit more form, a little bit more meat. Switch to the, to the views and confirm contours. I'll probably take, do one more pass here with contours before committing to anything else. Well, well, you know what? No, no, I won't do the pass on contours yet. Let's do a little bit on the neck and the head next. All right, for the neck, multi-cut, turn edge flow on. So shift control, right click, choose edge flow. Perfect. And uh, control, middle click, and control, middle click. So one down the center of the neck, one down, down the center of skull. But this one actually has a purpose. Well, they all have a purpose, but this one's meaningful in the face. This one's in front of the ear. So it's, notice that this one was behind the skull, behind the back of the skull. This one's in front of the ear, specifically, and behind the jaw. So go ahead and pull that behind it. All right. Like that. Switch to, switch to the front view and manipulate those to stay on contour. So this is fairly wide up here. Oops. This is where we might have some discrepancies between side view and front view when we get to these jowls. Some uh, inconsistencies.
All right, so if this one's the back of the jaw, then that means this one. If 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 this and this is the back of the jaw, then that means that vertex is most likely tucked in ever so slightly. So we see that jaw articulate a little bit better. And for now, just let the jaw kind of stick out a little bit more. It's easier to identify. I'm just going to just tuck in just a wee bit. This is the back of the head. That can tuck in a wee bit. And this can come out a wee bit. Kind of round out the skull there. All right, it's getting close to a low poly dog. And if you haven't deleted the construction history recently, um, the, the, the rebuild symmetry should do it for you. But just in case, uh, just to remind you, uh, delete the construction history. Now I'm going to go through a pass, um, and I'll do this off camera. I'm going to take what I have here. I promise I won't add anything more. And I'm just going to spend time matching contours and trying to round out the form as much as I can. I might spend 10, 15 minutes off camera doing this. I'm going to put the character on its own layer too. Again, I'm just taking a couple of minutes at this level of polygon detail and uh, matching contours. So I'm just tweaking vertices, vertices, tweaking in symmetry matching contours, and trying to stay true to each view. Here I've turned on uh, wireframe. I also have the option here to turn on x-ray, where you can kind of see through the mesh. X-ray is normally used when setting up joints, but we can use it for modeling as well. It's under the shading menu. Again, what I'm doing is matching contours with my, my limited number of vertices here. So here, I'm identifying something here on the shoulder and I'm wiggling it and I'm looking at the front view to see where it is and you can see that it's not quite thick enough and it, and it really doesn't feel thick enough right in the perspective view it's not in the correct place so if I just move this one out a bit now I feel like I'm, I'm getting closer to the actual shape of the dog thickening thickening this up a little bit quite a bit more and that might not be quite the right one, maybe here on the shoulder. Trying to find that that vertex that defines that shape. So this is not in the back. So this is, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of going back and forth between views and bouncing to perspective view and looking at references on my second monitor. So here you can see I've got my references on my second monitor and I just have them tucked to the side over here. Obviously there's a limit to how much I can get out of these these vertices. I don't I don't have much geometry, but I can certainly capture the bulk of the of the of the body. There's there's no reason uh at this point why I should not be able to capture the bulk of the body. So I should be able to look at this character in silhouette from far, far away, and or not even far away, but, but even this close, and recognize it as a dog. With the exception, of course, of some key details in the head. That'll really sell the dog. Now, in my perspective view, one thing I like to do to help prevent distortions and poor judgment is select the camera and change the focal length to 75. 75 and then keyframe that so that it stays there. So that way when you're zooming in, the character's still relatively flat. You could go higher, you could pop all the way to 150, but that would actually make it look like an orthographic viewport. Um, so we would lose a sense of perspective, but at least with 75, it flattens it so we can get close, but not lose a sense of perspective. Again, I don't have many polygons. I don't have very many vertices, but you can see here, I can actually start to visualize that musculature and skin and moving vertices in the flow of that direction of the skin and surface. And you can see here I don't have enough to articulate the folds in the back, but I can at least find the peaks and we can worry about the valleys later. Again, I'm just trying to stay on contour regardless of how 
in between vertices it doesn't stay on contours but I just want to stay on contours for for the little bit that I have here that's critical excuse me is it, sorry it's critical that we are capturing the the fullness of the character at this point because when we add edges after this point when we start to insert edge loops we can then switch to things like um, uh, edge slide and surface constraints and and using the edge flow to uh, of the multi-cut to really help us find the form of the animal faster much much faster so uh, yeah very very important at this stage to capture the the roundness the fullness of the character um, as much as we can so that as we insert edge loops we are we are um, not overworking we're not redoing the movement of vertices so for example when I sit here in the back view right now I don't have edge constraints or anything of the sort turned on so if I move this left or right too much and I switch back to perspective view I have invariably uh, I have uh, inevitably I've flattened it out and that's that's something that I'm trying to work against I'm trying to stay true to contours uh, following following the the leg uh, but at the same time uh, simultaneously I'm, I'm flipping to the perspective view checking the overall roundness and 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 curvatures of the body and looking at reference so that in preparation for when I'm adding new edges and using fancy tools like the uh, like the edge slide or surface slide I can just save myself a lot of headaches by spending a little extra time really only 10-15 minutes at this stage to get those contours to, to match up well so here again I've just selected really focusing on the hind leg I've selected a chunk of the back end of the body and I don't need to tail there I just need this this hind leg and then I select my back view and my side view and hit shift I so that I can focus uh, just on this area oops just focus on this area and, and one of the key things to believability of the animal is in fact the 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 curvatures of its legs you if you get that wrong it's simply not going to look like the animal be mindful of these kinds of long long uh, 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 triangular like polygons be very careful not to create these so even though you might think you need a vertex down here in order to solve something here using this polygons vertex is not the solution so move that up move this up take a look at perspective and see you know is it did it drastically hurt things in this case it didn't and understand that if you need a vertex here that's that simply needs to be inserted okay we need to go in there with the multi-cut tool and insert it again I'm not going to do that right now I'm still matching contours with my limited amount so with that in mind I know that I know where this vertex needs to be because I need this polygon to be more square like so that's the important key here thing key thing here is try to keep your polygons square like and you're probably saying well what if this isn't square this is rectangular but it will be square like because I'm anticipating a cut across so try your best to be mindful not to pull these down making these uh, triangular like sharp quadrilaterals you want to keep them square like and this is a unique problem right we haven't really had to deal with this with any model up to this point because everything we've made has has maintained its its squareness or its roundness because of its geometric shapes but here we're working with something that's not obviously geometric uh, so it's important to understand that the reason not to do that is because it would make this polygon far more challenging to paint far more challenging to deform understand that we're modeling now with deformations in mind we're modeling with the intent to animate this character so uh, even if this were a statue we'd still want to not do this even without deformation we still want to try and keep polygons square like uh, because 
uh, of the painting process. And the shortcut of it, uh, of course, is to increase the divisions, use the smoothing algorithm on it, use the smoothing tool. But even if I were to smooth it with this shape right here, I would still have very weird possibilities of texturing. So I would rather just play it safe, square like polygons as much as I can, keep poly density relatively high because I can always decrease it later on. So I am I am objectively trying to get to oops, I am trying to get to a higher poly density. Here I'm focused on the front leg foreleg and I am manipulating vertices to articulate elbow and the fro the the fore part of the leg. In this camera I've hidden the rest of the body. I'm just focused on the four legs. And once again just to remind you I have not added uh, I have not added any edge loops. Uh, take a look at this in the round. Uh, take a look at it without wireframe. And you can really get a feel for, you really can feel the the character um, in the silhouettes. I'm, I'm focused mostly on contours. Let's switch to a, a darker view here. Just look at contours. That's all I really want to pay attention to right now and it is feeling like a dog. Um, we could probably put some ears on it and paint eyeballs on it and have a low poly dog and the rest of it could be painted and I'd be done. Um, there is enough geometry here to be animatable, definitely. Um, there's some squareness in the back here. I want to get rid of that, round that out. There's some squareness in the chest. I want to round that out a little. Actually, the chest seems pretty good. Definitely the back though along the spine that needs a little tenderness. See one of the handy things about uh, having moved the vertices way back at the beginning is that if I bump the character and it goes off reference like that I can just come up here to my channel box enter zero and my character will snap right back. So if you had moved the object as opposed to moving the vertices way way back at the beginning you will have much more difficulty realigning your character to the reference if for some reason you bump it and you don't realize you bumped it like it's a tiny little bump like that just a little bit and then you do a whole bunch of work and then you wonder why things aren't matching your reference so you want to pay attention to that very first move rewind go back to the beginning and look at what I did I spent a little bit of time also comparing top view with the reference that I have Again, I'm not trying to be super accurate with musculature and, and correctness here. Uh, I don't have enough geometry to do that. I also don't want to change. You can see that the neck here is really it tapers off fairly quickly right here, but mine is very bulky and very thick. Um, I don't want to change mine much because I'm I'm true to my reference in in this view. So I don't want to drastically alter alter that you can see that I'm staying I'm staying on contours here so use it as a guide uh, but don't don't uh, you know obsess with where the contours are exactly matching it at least not until we get a little bit more geometry a lot more geometry actually